Right, hello everybody, good evening, um, welcome to our Selkut Digital YouTube channel and welcome back to our React Native Live Coding series. Um, tonight we are going to have two hour session as last week I couldn't make it so to make up for it, um, I'm going to live code straight for two hours tonight um, with 10 minutes break in between. Um, so uh, this is the agenda for tonight. Uh, we are going to be focusing on um, on some components tonight and mainly around the image capturing or selecting from a photo library um, because this is what our app is going to be all about um, and then if we have enough time I'm going to uh, investigate on the Firebase assets feature so we can eventually upload um, the images to uh, our server um, and as you might remember um, Uh, one sec. Uh, yeah, so as you might remember, we already have a storybook with a basic component, which is a button. We have four different variants. It's a text. Uh, I might probably just disable, um, the notifications as well so you guys don't see this weird things coming up on your screens uh, all right so yeah so this is the button we've got four different variants we've got um, different colors and different variants of the button so we can display it there is uh, there is a console log for it and tonight we are going to be adding a new one which is going to be um, either so we can do we can do it in a couple of ways we can either create our own action sheet component from scratch and then use it for our um, image action sheet uh, actions where we can just define the options to either um, take a photo with, a, with our camera or to select it from the photos library. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to use the one that Expo has and so it's going to be a bit faster and easier um, for us to use and we will achieve things a bit quicker. Du, 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 du. do let me know um, if you guys have, e have any issues or if the music is too loud or if you actually want me to increase the font or anything. Right. So we are definitely going to be using the camera um, where we can obviously take the photo, but we are also going to be using uh, The image picker, where we can define um, where that image has to be picked from. So that's definitely the first one to use. But to begin with, we want to start with React Native action sheet. So 
The idea is that when you press on something, or when the user presses on something, um, they will see the options where they can either upload a photo, use a camera to take a photo, or select a photo from the library. I mean, the device's library, obviously. So let me just go to React Native um, Docs. Just so we are on the same page. And so we have the API in front of us and know how to use it. It's a shame that they don't show screenshots of it. So we can't really can't really preview what it looks like. Maybe Expo has something like that. Nope. That's a shame. But that's okay. We could also use the alert, so it, it, it's really up to you how you want to uh, make it look. So this is this is something like like this, pretty much. There is going to be a button um, where they press something, and then the pop-up will show a couple of options of either um, selecting it from the library or asking them to take a photo. So maybe this is this is a good starting point. Uh, let me let me go for the alert. So this is the this is the example usage, and what we can do, we can actually create a package called. I'm going to call it um, image action sheet where I'm going to have index.js, as always, going to have styles.js, I'm going to have image action sheet.js, which is actually going to be our, um, our component. And then we can import image action sheet from image action sheet and then going to export it as a default one, just so it's there. And then in here, so what React Native are we on? Do, 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 do. 32, okay, fine. Uh, so I'm going to, oops, sorry. I'm actually going to have it as a as a stateless component, which is going to take a few props, definitely the options. Uh, is that right? Actually, no, a definitely a visible prop, so we can show and hide it. And then, And then we're going to display the alert. So we have to import React. I have to import React from React uh, because we are using, um, we're going to be using uh, some features from React, so we need it. Um, and then we're going to import alert from Expo. We're also going to export export default image action sheet. Right. So then 
a lead, we can actually the alert just so it's quicker and the alert um, takes a few arguments so the first one is the title the second one is the message then the buttons um, which are optional as I as I can remember correctly uh, or even the message is optional buttons are optional options are optional and and the type is optional so we are definitely going to be defining uh, options here. And because it's not defined yet, I need to define it right here. Options. So there are going to be a couple of options. First one is going to be called... Um, take a photo. And then the second one is going to be called select from library. Okay. Now I'm wondering if they're actually, if they, uh, they don't really, they don't really define what kind of, what kind of options we can pass. Oh, it's actually text and on press. So those are gonna be the two, the two um, properties that we need. Text and on press. So let's let's just define it now. I'm just going to give it some default values for now. Um, and then the buttons. There is going to be one button, which is going to be cancel. Okay. This is looking good now. So... We will also need a story for that. So I'm gonna call it image action sheet uh, dot stories dot js. And we'll we'll just copy this guy over. Image action sheet where I'm going to have only one for now. So I'm just going to have a very, very simple one. Uh, oops. It's going to be a primary. So we will need a button and then Obviously, below we'll have the image action sheet from the packages. So, whoops. So we can add it here. And then it will need to have the visible property. Okay. Now, Going to need to return it like so. Let visible to be false. And then on button press, the visible is going to change to true. But that will have to be returned like so. Okay. Now I will probably need to rerun. 
uh, the storybook just to make sure that all the latest changes are there and the new story is actually um, initialized because the previous instance didn't have a clue about it oh it's still still running Just restarting a bundle. <laughs> okay, and there you go. We've got our image action sheet right there. Okay, there is a problem. So, first of all, Going to have uh... actually, I'm going to call it basic. Okay, and let's see what the problem is. So, okay, so no, oh, there you go. I haven't haven't saved it yet. So here we go. Oops. And there was a typo as well. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. should just work um, didn't for some reason I'm wondering why uh, doo -doo -doo. yeah that is fine So the alert, 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 yep. Uh, I'm just going to add a, a prop to double check if that is there. Okay, that's better. Right. So we click that, but nothing happens. So let's go and console log our visible prop just to make sure that it actually changes when we click the button so we can see that it doesn't change uh, for some reason Okay, so I'm going to have, we'll need to have a state in here or or let me think. So I'm just wondering if I can have a state uh, within the storybook. Oop, not there. So the idea is basically to um, change the state on click and so um, the button can show based on that pretty much. 
Here's our storybook. And let me get to our stories. Ah, there is not much. I'm wondering if... Uh, um, there you go. This is what I need. So, uh, so Eric is saying that use state would rewrite the React component. Yes, it would, but because I'm using Expo, um, the, the version of Expo uh, 32 doesn't have hooks, my, my friend. So there is no way um, to use use state so what you were saying is that I would I would have to use use state. Uh, sorry, not here, but within within the button. Sorry, the image state store is here, and and this use set use state, which is which is a hook. It's the latest feature from React. Um, would be used here where I could have a constant called visible and set visible. And then this would be used from, from the hook and I could, I could set it like this. But because we are not, um, we are not on, uh, I don't think Expo even released version 33, which is uh, using hooks, we can't do that. So this is this is not possible on the current version of Expo, unfortunately. Um, I would love to use hooks, but this is not possible, I'm afraid. Um, so. Another idea <laughs> Yeah, I mean I I I can tell that, that you are very keen um, To change that and so am I but we are within the stories of a storybook so it's not just a basic uh, react kind of life cycle and what we need we need this kind of stuff we need like a storybook kind of state Or, uh, I think, yeah, this is, this is probably one of the options that we can do. We can have a storybook state where, where we can define um, our store. And then in that store, we can just do, um, we can just do set a basic or initial store and then mutate all of the all of the state properties. It's a bit weird that Storybook doesn't really do anything out of the box for a React Native um, for handling this kind of things.
which is a bit weird. Um, let me give it a go. let me give it a go. Let's see how that works. So, um, and there is a state and a store. Just gonna define it in the meantime as it's downloading. Wondering why they define it outside of the stories um, as this store, in my opinion, should be defined within the story so that it only stays within within that story, uh, just like so. And then if you have more uh, stories, you could have multiple stories, I believe. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, so what we have to do looks like we have to wrap. It's just this is just a bit kind of feels like an overkill. This kind of stuff. Um, But let's see how it goes. So, do 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 do. Um, just gonna call it visible. Okay, so this is this is like um, like kind of Redux um, in a normal life scenario where you have to wrap your entire app with the store provider, um, and then you can just access all of the store properties from within your app. Uh, so in this case, we um, we just do it, but kind of locally. I'm still wondering if if I could just define um, a class here instead of a instead of a stateless component or just a function. I'm wondering if I could just define here. Um, a class which extends either pure component or a component and then see if that has the access to the react lifecycle maybe not because uh, let me think This would be ideal. Uh, I would have to return this here. And probably I could just set the state directly there.
but um, I have a feeling that this, this wouldn't work. Let me, let me just check. Uh, let me just check this guy here first. Gonna run um, the simulator. Restart the bundle and everything. Let me just catch on the comments. Um, so the, um, the React UI kit said that there was a typo saying that this is an object um, and this is not how the, the arrow function works. If I wanted to return the object, as you are saying, I would have to wrap it with normal parentheses and then this would be this would be um, this would be the object then you see but because it's a narrow function um, actually uh, I actually have to so or even even better I could probably just do that so it returns the thing straight away um, but I'm gonna just keep it for readability like this okay let's let's reload our storybook so the idea the idea of this live streaming or this live coding is that I do not get prepared for it at all and I want to keep it as raw as possible and also um, learn and show you guys the real problems um, as obviously technologies um, do evolve and there are new versions released and if you are combining a few different tools together like I'm doing here for example um, the expo with React Native and Storybook with um you know es6 and things like that there are there might be some mismatches here and there and the documentation of a storybook might not be complete or might not be documented on how it works with expo so it's kind of a kind of a an experiment of how to um work out things and i i want to keep it as raw as possible just like that I don't want to be here a mentor I don't want to be um, telling you how to do things or how to use one way or another because I want to have this kind of interaction with you um, and show you that you know things um, that things don't always go very smoothly in development and this is the real life you know so um, so yeah, so I think the, the best way is to... Oh, interesting. I've been... Woo! Been signed out. Oh, there you go. Okay, we are back. Okay, so that still doesn't change. That's so weird. Let me console log the store and see if it's actually set in there. This is so bizarre. Uh... Do, 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 do. So probably because I'm running it within 
there. Um, what are the other options instead of storybook? Whoa, that's that's a very good question. Um, well, you can you can create your own custom solution for um, for displaying the components that you've created. So a storybook is basically like um, like a portfolio of what components you've got, and it's like a like a demo kind of um, playground where you just define what kind of components you've got, you import your components into the stories and then um, the storybook gives you this um, navigation of what components um, or what stories are defined and then you can go through um, different stories or different options in your navigation and you can see what the components are like. Um, and then, well, I think storybook is probably the most common or the, probably like the most known um, tool for that kind of stuff. And it works for multiple platforms as well. So you have a storybook for HTML, for React, for React Native, for Vue, Angular, Ember. Um, so this is, this is probably one of the Um, so yeah, it is, it's very common and a lot of developers do know how to use Storybook. So it's kind of a, um, a quick win for everybody. And, um, and yeah. Okay. So, um, Eric is asking if it's not possible to implement it in a common way. And by saying that I'm assuming he is thinking of um, defining a class here. So I'm going to call it uh, image action sheet story wrapper, which is going to extend pure component and a pure component is going to be imported from react core. Um, so that was also something, oh, oh, so you are asking if it's, if it's, if it's impossible to implement it without storybook. Um, it is, no, of course, um, it is possible to have, um, just like a, like a kind of custom solution where you just implement everything yourself and you kind of create, um, the component library from scratch yourself in React or React Native, whatever that is. Uh, but the thing is, the storybook comes with shorthands or shortcuts, and it's just a, it's just a, it's a quick win to spin it off and um, display all of your uh, components out of the box. So that's why. That's why I've used it. It will be probably a bit, it would take a bit longer to, uh, to implement it. Uh, from scratch. Okay. So now I'm going to see if we can get rid of this, this story stuff and Man, that's that's weird. It doesn't doesn't get it from there for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Let me just put it like this. I don't think it's going to be possible uh, to implement it like that. Because, oh, are we on, are we on the old ES6? Maybe. Uh, 
Jesus, haven't used this syntax for ages, but it's it's useless. Yeah, there you go. So I don't think it's possible to actually have it like that. No, so it's so what I'm using is actually Expo 32, and Expo 32 is based on um, React Native 57, if I can remember correctly, and it's based on React 16.5. So, um, yeah, it doesn't have hooks, it doesn't have all the latest features, and personally, I would, I would normally um, go for React Native um, by default. 59 React Native, of course. But anyway, so we are back to square one, where... Um, where, yeah, I'll try to use this state and store. So state is basically, so this state is like a provider. It's pretty much like Redux in um, normal life. So, going to return. The entire thing. And then, uh, so on press, we'll have this store set. And visible set to true. Oops. Okay, so now. We define our store, which creates a new instance of a store where we define our initial store or initial property visible set to false. Then from there, we can access the set method on the store to set visible to true. And hopefully this is going, oops. This is going to be passed down through the state provider which is obviously creating just like a context. Um, it's going to be passed down to this bad boy here. Okay, so this works. We can see that it works, which is fine. We now have a problem with our um, alert. And why is that? Back to our alert. Yeah, that's fine. So we should be able. Oh. Oh, it's actually not from Expo, it's from React Native. Now we are talking. Okay, basic. Okay. Now, this is a thing. Uh What we have to do so what they are saying is that nothing has been returned as it means that there was no um, object returned. There was no kind of like, um, like, a, like a React Native view or anything returned, which is exactly what happened because um, the... Um, the options or the alert is actually it's a method right it's it's not an it's not a component it's just a um, it's just the the API which basically um, programmatically create the views for us um, outside of this particular component right which means that um, we would rather have 
like a like a pure component here and on component did mount we could just um run or that would be that would be probably the easiest so with the hooks we could use stateless component but instead we will have to change this to uh to a uh, extent pure component component okay where uh, where pure component will come from react directly and then we will have to have a render function which does something okay and this could be for instance this could be whatever but then on component will mount we will check for visible prop and then if it's visible we're going to return this guy now uh, the options Or we could move the alert alert to the story. Yeah, that's that's correct. But the whole idea is to have a component which does it for us. So then whenever you use the component like this and you only set it to visible, that would trigger this um, this alert for us. So we don't have to uh, we don't have to set it every time we need to use this image action sheet. And this is the whole point of creating usable, reusable components. Um, yeah, you are right. So technically we could have it there, but because I want to have like options and everything. So if, okay, let me explain something. So if we, if we set it here on press to um, display the alert, we would have to define the entire thing every time we want to use it. And if we had it in multiple places, for example, imagine if you had like, um, I don't know, like for instance, a chat or something or the avatar or um, the functionality where you want to upload the images. Um, then that would mean you have to, you have to define those options every single time and set it wherever you unpress something instead instead i would rather have a, a component which is reusable and then whenever we want to use that component we can just set it to visible and all of those options and everything are gonna be there so i can define it once and reuse it multiple times and that's the whole idea of having it uh, but hold on a sec. Uh, yeah, it should have a return. I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna return a rev uh, just a view. Whoops. Just a view for now. Then this is probably missing its props validation, which is fine. We can set prop types whoops you can set the prop types here just going to have visible this is going to be a boolean which is required not sure what this welcome story is all about 
Yes, that's nothing we need. I'm not sure. Why? This is like this. Uh, I haven't used this version of React Native for a while. And not sure what kind of ES6 I'm on. Or if it's ES6 or anything older than that. Uh, so, Bubble, Preset, Expo. <laughs> Just trying to see what versions. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I do have um, stories already working, so it's not that the stories are not working. We actually... Uh, we are actually uh, doing something else. Okay, so it looks like I haven't got the prop types added here yet. Oh no, there you go. So they are there. All right, cool. Uh, visible. Am I missing anything here, guys? Because it says that it's missing the props validation. But, oh, sorry. Yeah, all right, cool. Got it. Right, now, let's define those those options. Um, and the option is going to be, so one is going to be saying, uh, take a photo. And another one is going to say, select from library. Okay. So then this is going to say, select option. And we don't really need a message. So I'm just going to leave it as now. Whoops. In the comma there. Yeah, we don't. We do want to have it uh, so it cancels. Okay. Now visible is set as required, but its value is undefined. Which is really weird. We can always set uh, default props to false. Uh, yeah, sure, definitely can turn the music down. Hope, hopefully that's better. Okay, interesting. I'm wondering um, how the... Oh, it never even gets there. Hmm, that's really, really, really weird. So it never actually gets to that component. Uh, 
I'm wondering if that's because this store library is not really working as expected. So it gets... Huh. Not sure. It never actually gets to... to render it, which is really odd. Because clearly, oh, there you go. So it actually, it actually is rendered, perfect. Uh, when I press it, it rendered as well. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, React component in another way. So what we could actually have is a higher order component, for example. And then that higher order component Um Oh sorry I can't I can't see links um because the the chat filters it out for me um so it doesn't pass the links unfortunately um the higher order component would basically wrap the entire um the entire component you want and then you would have the access to for example alert which then wouldn't have to return anything because basically um, right now we are defining it as a component and then that component expects to return some sort of view, which means let me see that link you shared. Uh, whoops. Um, mate, but what I'm doing is... So you're welcome. You're welcome. It's actually a custom component, which is there. And what I have is a centered view, which is also a custom component. It's just, it's just a different, a different component. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter what I pass down. This is how you define your stories. So if I do welcome, it's just a different component that it doesn't make any difference. Um, what, so this, this works fine. Everything here is fine. The problem is with this guy. So because it expects, um, it expects React Native to return something. And in this case, it returns a view. Wondering. Probably can't can't have it like that. So you see when I click it renders. It renders, but it never gets to component will mount. Which means that it's Oh actually no I'm wrong. It gets there but it doesn't update. It doesn't update um, the visible property based on the click. 
So the click should update. Should have, should update that one. Let me see if I can actually console log this props here and see if that if that value is actually passed down. As there you go, you see. So there is visible equal to false. Now it's equal to true. Perfect. So that actually worked, which is great. Um, now, what we can have is this. So we can have it right there. There you go. Now the problem is, well, not really the problem, but um, what we have to do is to set something on dismiss. Oops, 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 oops. So on dismiss, we want store set visible to false, right? So in that case, whenever we press um, cancel button or whatever that is, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what that, what that is. Here we go. So now we can open it and cancel it, right? Now we can probably refactor our um, our code a little, just so it's a bit more clean, if you like, then we can set the options right here. Yeah, that's the problem. It either should it should probably hmm interesting because normally that's that's just that's just a shorthand of of this stuff. Huh. Nope. It doesn't like it. Just quite weird. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we can have the options a bit higher up. We can even say set options or get options. Um, where we can oh my god I don't I don't really know what version of ES this is using or maybe the ES lint is really really weird I have to I have to check it I have to check it in a, in a while but for now let's let's just do this just so we don't waste too much time. Anyway, uh, so on this miss, it's going to be uh, a function which is required as well. This should be required as well and we shouldn't need any kind of default props. Don't need the view. I need to react. <laughs> oh, it's just unbelievable. 
looks like it doesn't set the visible property to false by default. And I'm not sure why that happens. Because this should be false by default. Um, but it's not. So for, for now, just as a shorthand, Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Maybe maybe this is making it really weird. But oh, I think it's just it's just the ESLint um, rule, which is like actually stupid. It doesn't. I probably should not um, react ESLint. uh just so it doesn't give that that warning there because yeah i mean first of all um to so there will be a one way of doing this i could have react or pure component like that and get rid of this and then there will be there wouldn't be a problem but i want to dis destructure it or deconstruct uh and i want to use it like this just because it's easier. Anyway, so we've got we've got our options. I think it's actually title that it needs. Uh, nope. Let me see. Let me see what it requires. So the alert. Here we go. Oh, it doesn't really tell me much, does it? Ah, dear, dear. Um, so I want to find out what properties I need for the options to actually display the titles, right? I thought this would be it. I thought it would be title um, and on press. But for some reason it isn't. It isn't the one. I'm wondering if this is because. So as you can see, there is this is the order. It's title, message, patterns, options, type. Oh, I think I know why that is. Um, it's probably because. No, I don't think it's that. I think. Default cancel distractive. Type. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah, that's not really what I need. So, um, this is the default message, right? Oh, I see. So there are three buttons. Um, so technically we probably don't even need um, options. We could probably just use three different buttons. And then instead of defining um, the buttons and options separately. Hey, here we go. Which is probably uh, even better and cleaner as well. You see? Um, so now we can say 
take a photo. Pressed and select from library. Okay. Take a photo pressed. Ah, huh, that's that's really weird. Or is it is it really taking its time? I guess I would have to. I guess I would have to um, dismiss it afterwards if I want it. Just so it's sensitive visible to um, false every time we press the option, right? So that kind of puts the state back um, in the parent component. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got our component to display um, the options. Now the next step will be to actually handle those options accordingly just so we can have um, handle photo take and I really have to figure out what's what's wrong with this syntax because ESLint is having a problem with it which means uh, let me see what ESLint version we've got and if it's actually using... Yeah, it's got all of the plugins. It's got the React and React Native plugin, so I'm wondering why it's being so um, anal. Because this is just a normal way of defining the method. But anyway... I'm going to take a look at it in a minute and let me just put so this is going to be the event and then and then in there we will handle um, the library selection or selecting a photo from the library. It's really bizarre. Oh yeah, of course. We probably could even have um, the same handler for both and make it generic enough to to use it in, in both cases just to keep things simple so as you as you can see even though there is a warning it's like with this fucking react uh, up there it still works but yeah it's just a bit weird could even do the same thing with prop types pretty sure I can just define it right there I think I should, I should look into um, ESLint configuration and make sure that it actually follows um, the latest rules and things. Ah, oh, yeah. Sorry. Need to set it as static. So, here we go. Now we have everything in one place. We can even export the entire class. So we can, we can have everything in, uh, whoops. I need to define default. 
because otherwise I would have to import it differently. Okay, perfect. So now the next step is going to be um, to use the image picker from from Expo where um, you either launch the camera or select things directly from um, from the library, right? Yeah, there you go. So image picker has two methods. The first one is called launch image library synchronously and launch camera asynchronously. And this is what we are going to do um, next when when we select one of the options. So when we take a photo, this will launch the camera um, and then we will handle the callback accordingly. Also, when we press select from library, that is going to um, to run the library, the, the device's library, and we can handle that accordingly as well. Um, but before that, uh, I'm just going to have a quick break. Um, and then we will go probably for another hour. Um, but yeah, this is it. This is it so far. Um, thanks very much for watching the first part of the streaming session. Um, and I'll see you guys in a short while. Thanks.